How do you feel about the political trends of the United States, the uh, Western world? The way everybody feels, except more consciously. I feel that it is terrible, that you see destruction all around you, and that you are moving toward disaster until and unless all those welfare state conceptions have been reversed and rejected. It is precisely these trends which are bringing the world to disaster because we are now moving towards complete collectivism or socialism, uh, a system under which everybody is enslaved to everybody. And we are moving that way only because of our altruist morality. Ah, yes, but you say everybody is enslaved to everybody. Yet this came about democratically, I, and the free people in a free country voted for this kind of government, wanted this kind of legislation. Do you object to the democratic process? I object to the idea that people have the right to vote on everything. The uh, traditional American system was a system based on the idea that majority will prevail only in public or political affairs, and that it was limited by inalienable individual rights. Oh. Therefore, I do not believe that a majority can vote a man's life or property or freedom away from him. And therefore, I do not believe that if a majority votes on any issue, that this makes the issue right. It doesn't. All right. Then how do we arrive at action? How should we arrive at action? By voluntary consent, voluntary cooperation of free men, unforced. And how do our leaders arrive? How do we arrive at our leadership? Who elects? Who appoints? Uh, the whole people elects. Uh, there is nothing wrong with the democratic process in politics. Uh, we arrive at it the way we arrived by the American Constitution as it used to be by the constitutional process, as we had it, uh, people elect officials, but the powers of those officials, the powers of government are strictly limited. They will have no right to initiate force or compulsion against any citizen, except a criminal. Uh, those who have initiated force will be punished by force, and that is the only proper function of government. What we would not permit is the government to initiate force against people who have hurt no one, who have not forced anyone. We would not give the government or the majority or any minority the right to take the life or the property of others. That was the original American system. Let me put it briefly. I'm for the separation of state and economics, just as we had separation of state and church, which led to peaceful coexistence among different religions after a period of religious wars. So the same applies to economics. If you separate the government from economics, if you do not regulate production and trade, you will have peaceful cooperation and harmony and justice among men. You are certainly enough of a political scientist to know that certain movements spring up in reaction to other movements. The labor movement, for instance, certain social welfare legislation. This did not spring full-blown from somebody's head, uh, I mean, out of a vacuum. This was a reaction to certain abuses that were going on. Isn't that true, I? Uh, not always. It actually sprang up from the same source as the abuses. If by abuses you mean the legislation, which originally had been established to help industrialists, which was already a breach of complete free enterprise. What I'm saying is that nobody should have the right, neither employers nor employees, to use state compulsion and force but when you, advocate, when you advocate completely unregulated economic life in which every man works for his own profit, you are asking, in a sense, for a, a devil-take-the-hindmost, dog-eat-dog society, and one of the main reasons for the growth of government controls was to fight the robber barons, to fight laissez-faire, in which the very people whom you admire the most, I, the, the hard-headed industrialists, the successful men, uh, perverted the use of their power, is that not true? No, it isn't. No. Uh, this country was made not by robber barons, but by independent men, by industrialists who succeeded on sheer ability. And who having... By of course ability, I mean without political force, help, or compulsion. But at the same time, there were men, industrialists, who did use government power as a club to help them against competitors. They uh, were the original collectivists. Today, uh, the liberals believe that that same compulsion should be used 
against the industrialists for the sake of workers. But the basic principle there is, should there be any compulsion? And the regulations are creating robber barons. They are creating capitalists with government help, which is the worst of all economic phenomena. I'm, I think that you will agree with me when I say that you do not have a good deal of respect for the society in which you and I currently live. You think that we're going downhill fairly fast. Now, I would like you to think about this question, and you'll have a minute intermission to ponder it and then come back and answer it. Do you predict dictatorship and economic disaster for the United States if we continue on our present course? Do you? Uh, if the present collectivist trend continues, if the present anti-reason philosophy continues, yes, that is the way the country is going. But I do not believe in historical determinism, and I do not believe that people have to go that way. Men have the free will to choose and to think. If they change their thinking, we do not have to go into dictatorship. But the majority of the people has never been given a choice. You know that both parties today are for socialism, in effect, for controls, and there is no party. There are no voices to uh, offer an actual pro-capitalist, let's say fair, economic freedom and individualism. That is what this country needs today.